I'm going to go over a new build that I made for Diablo 4 Necromancers. The build focuses on Corpse Explosion and Sever. Sever is usually used on single target elites and boss mobs. The build is very good, very powerful, but it does have its weaknesses. So without further ado, I'm just going to jump into the build and start explaining the build. And I'm going to begin with the character gear and the reasons why I took some of the skill points that I did with the gear. So I'm going to begin from the top left. I'm going to begin with the helmet. Um, the helmet has intelligence, which is a primary stat for your um, necromancer builds. Then it has total armor percentage. I really like total armor percentage on a lot of my gear. I find it to be highly important at higher um, terror levels or trying to push higher tiers for nightmare dungeons they have very high total armor then it has dexterity which is going to give you more crit going to help you get your power nodes on your paragon board the maximum essence is not ideal it helps a little bit but i would probably want to get maximum life to help my build out more the aspect is an increase the armor for four seconds and stacks up to 50%, which is really, really important to me while playing Diablo 4 builds with the Necromancer and trying to push higher tier maps. And um, like I said before, I like to focus on armor a lot on my Paragon board and my um, character. Say it goes over the helmet, the chest has 15 all stats, maximum life, which is always good, total armor percentage again, and then I um, have damage reduction from distant enemies. I really enjoy this stat. I believe it's very good and helps a lot while playing higher tier maps. And the uh, aspect is a barrier for 10 seconds, and this effect can only happen every 30 seconds and happens when you damage an elite enemy. The barrier is pretty high, pretty good, good aspect. Really not much choice in the way of defensive aspects for Necromancers. So that goes over the chest. I'm gonna go over the gloves, which are unique, and they're hollow from below. I'm gonna try and explain why the hell from below really helped this build. So the first stat that on the build is a lucky hit chance. And a huge part of this build is designed to reduce the cooldown of blood mist in order to always have it up. So this lucky hit chance helps. And the reason the lucky hit chance helps is I'm gonna swing over to the skill tree I'm going to scroll down to the Decrify. Decrify slows the enemy by 40% and they deal 20% less damage. That's just as rough as the net. But the real kicker here is Abhorrent Decrify. And what this does, it's a lucky hit chance. Enemies hit while afflicted with Decrify have up to a 50% chance to reduce your active cooldown by 1%. So this lucky hit chance is increasing your chance of reducing your cooldowns by one second. And the main one that you're trying to reduce is blood mist, so you always have it up. Or that you could always activate it again during a really hard elite pack. So that explains the reason for the lucky hit. And the gloves, the help from below, have a very high lucky hit chance. I have a very good roll stat on here too. So the corpse skill attack speed is pretty cool. Helps a little bit. The lucky hit chance to stun, always good. Lucky hit chance to fear helps a lot. And then the aspect is whenever you use corpse explosion, a volatile skeleton charges at a random enemy. So if you're gonna use regular gloves and you use corpse explosion on top of a corpse, it's just gonna be right there. It's just gonna be a big old blob of purple mess that they really need to fix right now in the game but 
that's how it works. But when you actually use the Hall from Below Uniques, you're going to have a skeleton pop up and it's going to run towards the enemy, which is really cool. The aspect also has an increase of corpse explosion, and it's a percentage times, so it's a very large DPS increase. Um, I'm going to go over corpse explosion really quick on a skill tree. You got corpse explosion, you're definitely going to be taking all of them. And any possible way that you can increase the damage of corpse explosion because it's a main stat main skill point in your build. And then you're going to take Blighted Corpse Explosion, causing it to be shadow damage over time. So that goes over the gloves. I'm gonna go over the unique leggings, which are another large part of the build. The leggings, in essence, all the stats on them are pretty blah. They increase potion drop rate, all stats, chance to heal and heal and receive are all very nice, but Really not that great. I, I also like that it grants you movement speed for two seconds when you use a potion, which always helps. I always like going a lot faster and moving faster. But really the important um, thing about these leggings is the aspect. I'm gonna go over them really quickly. Effects that heal you on 100% life grant you a barrier up to 40 to 80% chance not chance but always give you of your maximum life that lasts for eight seconds so every possible way that we could actually get over 100 percent life is going to grant you a barrier and this is going to be achieved by using iron maidens abhorrent iron maiden so every time you kill an enemy you're going to be healing yourself so this is going to activate the barrier on unique leggings. So that's really cool. It's definitely going to help a lot for your survivability. As always, I'm using maximum life um, gems on my um, helmet, my chest, and my leggings to increase the amount of barrier that I'm getting from unique leggings as I like to call the T leggings. And of course, you want to get the higher percentage of your maximum life on the leggings. I have 68%, which is pretty good. I wish I had better, but this is what I got. So that goes over leggings. I'm going to go over the boots. And the boots um, have essence cost reduction, which is not very important. A better stat I would probably want to get for the boots are a reduction of cooldown would be very good. The dodge chance I enjoy a lot. The plus four to corp, the corpse tendrils doesn't really help, but I guess having faster corpse tendrils is always cool. And then I always enjoy having movement speed on my boots. I like to go faster. The aspect plays a large part in the build, and what it does is blood mist triggers corpse explosion, which is really cool on surrounding corpses. When blood mist detonates a corpse, its cooldown is reduced by 0.2 to 0.5 seconds. So you want to always have blood mist up or try to get it up as quickly as possible with this build through using Abhorrent Greprify and using Corpse Explosion for the lucky hit chance from the Hall of Terror's gloves. So You're also going to want to take the Blood Mist ability, of course, on the skill tree, and then you're going to want to take Ghastly Blood Mist, which is going to leave a corpse behind every point, pretty much every one second that you're, you have Blood Mist up. So it's probably going to be around three corpses. So you're probably going to get about a, a 0.15 second shave off if you have the best aspect for blood mist corpse explosion and having blood mist up all the time is very important so it goes over the boots gonna go over the weapon um the weapon is a two-handed sword i enjoy two-handed swords but a scythe would definitely help a lot with activating the leggings for the barrier but the 
weapon has stunned enemies percentage, which is going to be useful when I use Corpse Tendrils, and Corpse Tendrils gives you a three second stun. And then the Intelligence, which is always cool for more damage and resists. All stats is another really good stat. Then Critical Strike Damage, which is going to help with the aspect of the weapon. I have the best aspect for Corpse Tendrils. So every time I use Corpse Tendrils, I get 40% chance of Critical Strike for 6 seconds. And then I get 120% bonus Critical Strike Damage to enemies damaged by Corpse Tendrils. Remember, that are damaged by Corpse Tendrils. I'm going to go over the Corpse Tendrils and what you want to um, take and your choices that you have. I only have one point in Corpse Tendrils because you're going to be reducing your cooldowns a lot from Abhorrent um, Deprify. So you're really not going to want to take a lot of points in this. So one is sufficient. At the moment, I am only using, uh, I am using Plate Corpse Tendrils for vulnerability for higher damage output. But if you really wanted to, you could use Blade Corpse Tendrils to activate the T leggings or unique leggings to get more barrier every time you use corp Corpse Tendrils. So it's definitely your choice on the legging, on the um, Corpse Tendrils on the skill tree. I am also using Damage Over Time gems because this is a dot build because our main source of damage is going to be um, Corpse Explosion, making it um, shadow damage. So that goes over the um, weapon. Oh, I accidentally took off the amulet. But the amulet is um, really not that great. I would definitely would like a different one, but um, total arm percentage, I really enjoy total armor percentage and think it helps with pushing higher levels of content in the game. Slow duration negative, pretty cool, not great, but gonna definitely help. The Tides of Blood passive are not going to help. Um, you probably want to get something that's going to increase your numbers with Corpse Explosion or Tear for more um, darkness or shadow damage. The cooldown reduction is really good. Um, I definitely would like a higher stat for this, but I'll take what I could get. The um, aspect is huge. You deal um, a a like a huge times percentage for Shadow Blade. Every time Shadow Blade enemies 10 times or so. This is going to be going off a lot too with Corpse Explosion. So you're going to be doing massive amount of damage with Corpse Explosion with this aspect. Really important aspect. You're definitely going to want to get this one. That goes over the amulet. The ring has damage close to enemies. You're probably going to be close to enemies a lot of the time. So this doesn't really affect you too much. Maximum Essence is not great. I'd prefer like a cooldown reduction. Crit critical strike chance is a whatever stat. Maximum life, I always enjoy having more maximum life. And I chose this aspect over different ones because I thought it played nicely into the build. And what the aspect does is skills deal up to 10 to 20% times damage based on your available primary resource when cast. So we're usually not going to be using any um, primary resource or use a resource at all when we're using Corpse Explosion. So we're pretty much getting a 10 to 20% times increase to our damage all the time when using Corpse Explosion. I thought it was really cool and I thought, I'm not sure if it works with Corpse Explosion. Maybe someone could let me know, but I think that's a really cool way to increase your damage on your build with this build. So that goes over ring one. And then ring two, you have physical damage. I'm not sure if this actually helps with corpse explosion being the base of um, for physical damage, but you could definitely want to get shadow damage or something different. Like um, cooldown reduction is always good. Then it has critical strike damage percentage. Critical Strike Chance, 
and maximum essence, which is not going to help. You probably want to get like a um, more health or lucky, another good stat for your rings or lucky hit chance percentage, which is going to help reduce your cool run of blood mist and everything else. And the uh, um, aspect is blood mist leaves a trail of shadow damage for four seconds. And your movement speed while using blood mist doesn't that isn't affected. So whenever you do use blood mist, it reduces your cooldown. So this removes it. So that goes over the gear and the reason to why I actually took some of the points with the gear. I'm gonna go over a couple of the um, skill points that I didn't go over really quickly on the skill tree. You're gonna be taking reap. You pretty much have to have a resource generation, but you're not going to be using reap at all because you're going to be blowing up corpses and getting essence back from corpse explosion, which is tied to um, Grim Harvest on the skill tree. So then you're going to be taking sniper to take down enemies, like single target enemies, bosses, and single um, elite creatures or mobs. I took um, Paranormal Sever to increase the damage every fourth cast of it to cause vulnerability. Then I have Blood Mist, of course. Oh, I forgot Hued Flesh. Um, Hued Flesh is going to um, give you more corpses to blow up because it's a lucky hit chance, which is very important. So the more corpses that you have on the ground, the more corpse explosions you're going to be able to do. Then um, you have Blood Mist with Ghastly Blood Mist. I went over this already. Um, corpse Explosion, you're gonna be making it um, Shadow Damage, so you're gonna be taking Bloody Corpse Explosion. I took Grim Harvest for more um, Essence Generation. This is not always going to be effective or useful, but I took it anyways, because I find it to be useful on bosses and helps with killing single lead mobs. Then, uh, um, Fueled by Death is always going to be great because it increases your damage from consuming a corpse. And cor corpse explosion is definitely a um, consuming a corpse, so your damage is going to always be increased. I went over Iron Maiden and Evborn Iron Maiden. I went over Decrify and Evborn Decrify. Corpse Tendrils went over it. Then I have points into um, Reaper's Pursuit, Gloom, and Terror, which are going to increase your damage or your Shadow or Darkness damage. Then I have Standalone, which is going to reduce the damage reduction that you take. I also forgot that I took Amplified Damage, so every time I curse an enemy, I get increased damage times. Then the last point is in the Shadow Blade, your key um, node for increasing your damage for your aspect on your amulet. So that goes over the skill tree and gear and the reasons why I took everything. So I'm going to um, jump into the Book of the Dead and I sacrifice the Reapers for more shadow damage. Then for Skeleton Mages, I sacrifice skeleton mages and I took um, the cold sacrifice for more vulnerability damage which is tied to um, corpse tendrils then the golem I am using maximum life 10 times which is helping with survivability but you could always take iron and sacrifice for more critical strike damage so that goes over the book of the dead I'm going to go over the Paragon board now, and I'm going to go over the order and the reasons why I took everything. So, here I go. First, I took Prime, more damage. Obviously, you're going to want more damage. Then, I picked up the Glyph Socket, and the Glyph I took was Control. You're going to be constantly using Decrify. And you're going to be using Corpse Tendrils, so 
the crowd control damage avenues is going to be huge, even from the get-go. So when you hit level 50 and you start working on your Paragon boards, this is going to be very helpful for your build. Then I took Knowledge for more damage. Then I took Preservation for Armor. I always, I take a lot of armor with my Paragon board because I enjoy um, surviving and being able to, to take a hit. Then you're going to um, take the board Wither and on Wither you're going to um, jump to the Glyph Socket and then take Shadow Damage over time because your primary damage on this build is going to be Shadow Damage from Corpse Explosion and um, the Glyph is Scourge and it's going to increase your damage, your Shadow Damage. You and your minions are increased damage to afflicted enemies by shadow damage over time. So really, really good. Gonna help you a lot. Then shadow damage is your next step or malediction. Then you're going to take lingering shadows, more shadow damage and shadow damage over time. Then you're gonna take gnawing darkness, more shadow damage, elite damage. Then you're going to take Dragon Shadows, you're going to reduce the damage of enemies affected by shadow damage. And then you're going to take Wither, which is going to increase um, or give you a chance to increase the ticks of your shadow damage by 50% times. Not a very high percentage, but definitely going to help your DPS out a lot. Then you're going to, um, this is up to you if you want to take the Flesh Eater board or the Scent to Death board. In my opinion, I took the Left Flesh Eater because consuming five corpses grants you 40% times damage. You're gonna be constantly be using Corpse Explosion, which is consuming a corpse. So I took this first. So you're, you're gonna run immediately to the Glyph Socket and you're gonna take Embarer, which is going to increase your um, damage while you're healthy. Typically, you want to be healthy all the time while playing Diablo 4, so this is a really good um, Glyph Socket. It's also going to increase your potion healing. Then, I took Targeted, which is going to increase the damage of enemies. Then, I swung and I took up Flesh Eater Legendary Node for more damage, a significantly more damage. Then, I took... Poison condition. I really took this only for the armor. Like I, I love armor in this game. I think it's really important. And then I finished the board off with your dive for more resistance, a little bit of intelligence. Then I went to the right of the wither board, and I took the scent to death board. And then I ran to the Glyph Socket and I took Darkness, which is going to increase your shadow damage by a percentage. And it's also going to reduce the, dam reduce the damage of enemies up to 10% 10 10 for five seconds. And um, after that, I took Preservation for more armor. And then I took Dark Death Marked. And then it was a legendary node sent to death for more damage survivability. Then I took ruin for more damage to healthy enemies, critical strike damage, and the last step was death ringer. Of course, you're, you're going to have more points than me. I'm too lazy to do the campaign. I, I still have eight points left, so you know, take whatever you feel that you want. You always have multiple options. So that goes over the order and the um, paragon boards.